Hey everyone, Dom Griffin, your favorite film critic here, and you are watching the Armchair Auteur. This is an ongoing video series I do where we talk about movies, screenplays, television series, comic books, uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, so if you like movies and you like movie adjacent popular culture, and to see somebody pick those things apart, you're in the right place and you should consider subscribing. Today, we're doing a, we're doing a book review. Never done one of those in the channel, I don't think. No. We're reviewing this. We're reviewing Cinema Speculation, the new book from Quentin Tarantino. Hmm. I haven't read an actual book in a very long time, I'm embarrassed to admit. Uh, I haven't read Heat 2, I haven't read uh, Tarantino's last book, the novelization of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Like, I read comics from time to time, I read a lot of essays on the internet, I haven't like sat with a book, like a physical paper book, and like opened it and flipped through the pages and stuff in a very long time. Uh, I think the last book I read was also a book about movies. Uh, Pat Oswalt's book, uh, Silver Screen Fiend, I think it's called. Uh, a book that this has some similarities to. But the other day, I had my first day off in nearly two weeks, uh, and my girlfriend surprised me with a copy of Cinema Speculation. I forgot the book was even coming out. I'm not gonna lie, I've been working a lot, and my understanding of time and the passage of it, very jaundiced. So naturally, I took a much needed break from screens, uh, and I plopped on the couch, and I thumbed through it uh, almost immediately. But I, I'm so glad because I loved it. For like the last 10 years or so, Quentin Tarantino has threatened to retire after his theoretical 10th feature. The idea he wants to retire after making 10, in his mind, perfect movies, and leaving with like his uh, legacy intact. And his plan has always been to do one more movie and then to become a man of letters, uh, to write books and novelizations and plays and things like that. And I used to think that was like kind of lame, but like now, after having read this, I'm fine even if he doesn't make that final movie and just continues cranking out books. Cinema Speculation is a collection of essays about films in the late 60s and 70s. Each chapter features straightforward film criticism mixed with interviews, memoir-esque recollections of Tarantino seeing the films in his youth, and behind-the-scenes insight. The speculation of the title comes from the fact that, in his usually Tarantinian way, every chapter veers off into multiple tangents, often theorizing the alternate avenues a film could have gone down had any number of creatives been swapped out for others at the time. There's quite a lot to love here, uh, but some of my favorite bits include making the distinction between the film school movie brats of the latter half of the 1970s versus the hippie iconoclasts of the late 60s and early 70s, and their differing attitudes towards the establishment cinema of the golden age of Hollywood, taking Martin Scorsese to task for not making Harvey Keitel's pimp sport from Taxi Driver a black man, a change from Paul Schrader's script that allows the film to be easily consumed alongside every other death wish revenge matic from the era, and then subsequently taking Schrader to task for the second half of his film Hardcore, and Quentin Tarantino defending the world of pornography with all the verve of Saul Goodman, explaining how modern audiences could never appreciate the first Rocky movie the way audiences did in 1976, because they didn't live through the dour parts of the 70s new wave that made it feel like movies were never going to be fun or uplifting ever again. And finally, a bittersweet passage about a man he should have thanked when he won the Best Original Screenplay Oscar for writing Django Unchained. The closest thing I can think of to like a real criticism of the book that you're definitely going to see in other reviews of the book is the fact that it kind of goes all over the place. I wouldn't exactly call the pace meandering, but like any interview he's conducted over the last 30 years, this is a guy who loves to talk and has a reservoir of film knowledge whose depth is only matched by his enthusiasm for the art form. So yeah, it can be a little scatterbrained at times but like in a fun and infectious kind of way. Watching him switch hats back and forth from film theory scholar to obsessive minutia archivist to a little kid falling in love with the form for the first time to an elder auteur revisiting films from the lens of having made them for 30 years, it's a real treat. But there's two main reasons the book hit me so hard this week as I read it. One is the way Tarantino talks about the actual craft of film criticism. From wearing his admiration for and influence from Pauline Kyle proudly on his sleeve, to penning a beautiful love letter to LA Times second string film critic Kevin Thomas. It's rare, I'll admit, but like occasionally a particularly hurtful YouTube comment or uh, a mean-spirited quote tweet on Twitter will really get to me occasionally uh, and, and lead me to feel questioning whether or not film criticism, something I spend a significant amount of my time in life doing, uh, is meaningful in any way, or matters, or if it's just a waste of time. Or the people that write film criticism for a living, uh, if they're just like failed artists who are just like digging at people and, you know, being kind of like lifeless leeches. Especially when you're like battling with regular depression, it's kind of hard not to feel like the things that you do and post on the internet like, are kind of like meaningless compared to like people who actually, actually make things, actually make like art. But in the book, Tarantino really highlights how 
important film criticism is to film as a medium and how healthy and diverse film discourse, not like the weird shit that happens on film Twitter, but like genuine, like actual good faith film criticism, how important that is to the evolution of, of, of art and like filmmakers read film criticism. And like, there's like a relationship between the people who watch and dissect films and the people that make them. And, uh, I, I thought it was really fascinating. Like, it's not something that like a lot of modern people like espouse anymore in the industry. I feel like there's like a real scorn for the act of, of making criticism, uh, from people that make things cause they kind of want them to just be PR. And then also there's like a weird, sense of entitlement from people that do film criticism and like they do have sort of like a, a pretension about them, you know, but the way Tarantino uh, explores that in the book is like really fascinating and really like earnest and like really sweet, honestly. The other bit is going to sound a little bit weirder, but the book made me feel like a real sense of kinship with Quentin Tarantino. Um, so much of the book is like actual autobiography, essentially. Uh, in an interview with Jimmy Kimmel recently promoting the book, uh, he, he had this to say. It's not a hundred percent biography, but there's a lot of biography. There's a in lot there. in yeah. here, including. And the, well, it's one, well, one of the uh, Pauline Kael actually once said they they asked her would she ever after her whole lifetime writing for movies. They asked her would she ever write her autobiography autobiography, and she said, "No, I have in every single one of my reviews." Mm. And and you know if you go through her reviews, you do get a really good you know, uh, uh, take of what kind of person she was in it. So I think if you're writing about movies in a personal way, then you can't help but tell your story. So even though the book is about him talking about movies, talking about The Getaway, talking about uh, Dirty Harry, talking about, you know, stuff like that, in the stories about his connection to those movies, he shares bits about himself. And in those bits, I, I, I saw a lot of myself in Tarantino and in, in the way he talked about his life and his upbringing. Like, we were both raised by single mothers. We both were primarily raised around like female authority figures, uh, people who in our youth around the age of like seven and eight showed us a lot of genuine like adult actual movies uh, and how that shaped our connection to storytelling over time. Uh, we both had jobs working at video stores. We we're both very obsessive about the act of storytelling. Like Tarantino is always one of my favorite filmmakers. Like I like most of his movies. Like I'm a fan, um, but I never felt as connected to his work as I did reading this and seeing the little ways things he saw in movies and things he reacted to in his youth informed the work he would go on to make. He doesn't really draw a lot of those broad comparisons, but like you've seen all his movies and you've seen the movies he's talking about and you see the way he discusses them. It's, it's like right there. It's like obvious. You can see like, oh, he pulled that from this. This is where he was inspired by that. Like, it's very cool. In some ways, the book reminds me of another one of my favorite books, Super Gods by Grant Morrison, where Grant tells this like long, century long history of superhero comics, but through the lens of their own childhood and like growing up reading those comics. So it's like half autobiography, half textbook on the medium. And this is very similar, less exhaustive, but very similar. I think part of the reason why I didn't find his writing style in this book as irritating as some people who have not liked the book is because I, I relate to it. Like the way that he forms thoughts and opinions on the page is very similar to the way that my mind works when I'm like thinking about movies. He, there's this way he sort of darts from random piece of cinematic ephemera to other random pieces of cinematic ephemera. And like, just the way he draws connections from like, in this movie, with this person, who's in this, who's in that? Like, he just like kind of goes off. But that's just kind of how I think. I think until a lot of people who grew up on popular culture think, obviously, um, which is probably why he's such a popular filmmaker for a lot of people. But I'm very lucky <laughs> over the years to have worked with a lot of very sharp editors who helped me like, you know, sort of curb most of my worst instincts as a writer. So like, I maybe people who read my stuff don't see this in the way that I write anymore because that it kind of smartly beaten out of me. Thank you very much. But it's like charming and, and interesting to see this guy talk about movies in this childlike way that never feels like irritating. And like, it's not like it's like immature. Like a lot of the analysis he makes of films, particularly like the chapter about deliverance is like way more like thought provoking than I expected from the book. I thought it was gonna be a lot more like, kind of goofy stuff, but I was like, oh, this is like really, really like interesting. Like, like this is, I mean, really smart way to look at this film. Part of the reason I couldn't, I just couldn't put it down was it's like, it felt like I was just catching up with like a friend. Like I was just jawing with a pal about movies. And honestly, the act of talking about and sharing feelings about movies with people who love movies is almost as much fun as watching movies, almost as much fun as I imagine making movies is. Uh, it's all kind of part of the, the process. And it's kind of why I started this channel. It's kind of why I love Letterboxd so much. 
I love watching movies, but I love talking to people afterwards. I love sharing my thoughts and my opinions. I love hearing other perspectives on movies. Like I'll share a link in the description below, but I spent all of October, I've watched 47 horror movies this past month, uh, and I documented all the movies I watched on Letterboxd, and like, it was some of the most fun I've had in months. It was like some of the best feeling I had in months of just like watching like a diverse array of movies and then checking into the movies my friends were watching for the month and stuff and like sharing ideas and, 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 and options and like deciding to check out movies my friends had hit me to like big shouts out to my friend Kyle Bragg for hitting me to um, the movie All the Colors of the Dark which I really really liked and I was not going to watch otherwise it was not on my list like stuff like that like it's like that's that's the thing that I love about about movies and when the watch project was like over when like the October was over um, I was kind of feeling like, I don't know what I'm going to do next. Like, I'm, I'm going to go back to, like, this random malaise. I don't want to watch next. The movie's coming out for the rest of the year. All kind of like, whatever, you know. I, I, what am I going to do? But this book really uh, filled that void for me. You know, it really made me feel the same kind of fun that I felt, like, scrolling through Letterboxd, like, hearting my friends' reviews, uh, and then messaging them afterwards about things they saw and asking follow-up questions and stuff. Like, it's so, it's exhaustive and it's fun. Um, but it really only covers, essentially, like, I don't know, like nine years of like his like viewing habits and stuff. So like, there's so much more room to go further uh, in in this book. There's so many other things he can explore. Um, there's things he hints at, like how much he hates most of like the '80s cinema, which is funny. Not something I guess you would automatically think about Quentin Tarantino. Um, I'd love to see him talk about more contemporary works as well. Like, this could just be what he does now. Like. Uh, I don't care if we ever get that to the movie, bro. Like, it's fine. Like, he made nine movies I like quite a bit. Um, we're, we're good. Let's move on to this era now. Let's, you know, my, my, my fellow tomato meter approved friend, Quentin Tarantino, writing books. Ultimately, cinema speculation feels kind of like uh, a warm hug from a friend. Uh, so if you feel like you've been needing that sort of embrace, then I implore you to check the book out. Like, in EPUB form or whatever, read on your iPad, who cares? Like, just read the book, it's good. It's fun. If you've seen all the movies he talks about, there's actually fun insight about them that you might not have previously known or maybe have forgotten or something. Um, and if you haven't seen these movies, this book gives you plenty of homework. So if you're one of those people who sits around and doesn't know what, the, what they want to watch next, like there's a prime watch list to be made right from this. Um, so, yeah. Um, good book. Maybe we'll do more book reviews uh, here in the future of the channel. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on Tarantino Cinema Speculation. Fantastic book. Check it out. Uh, thank you guys for watching, as always. I uh, love you guys so much. And um, I'll actually be back next week with a, a review of something. And then after that, I think we're going to try to get like an actual honest-to-God video essay back on the channel. It's been so long. I've been so blocked. and have, uh, We're going to do it, though. We're going we're gonna to get back at it. Because um, that's what you guys want the most. And it's kind of what I want to get back to making the most. So thank you all for who stuck around this year with this inconsistent upload schedule. And it's been... Super great and fun and awesome. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts about the book or questions or whatever, ask me in the comments below. I'll answer. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Uh, there'll be some fun new stuff on the channel here very soon. So hope everyone's doing well, staying safe, being good to yourselves and each other. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.